As the United States and Europe weigh their options, Russia's next move also will be under close scrutiny to discuss the regional and global implications of the referendum. I'm joined now by James Jatris, who is Deputy Director of the American Institute in Ukraine. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, do you expect Crimea to become a part of Russia, or is this referendum just part of a negotiating tactic on the part of the Russians? I think there's a very strong chance that it will become part of Russia. I would give it more than 95 percent chance that that will happen. The uh, Duma is supposed to consider that on March 21st. There is a small chance it might not, depending what happens next with the sanctions and whether any real negotiation takes place about the political order within the rest of Ukraine and between uh, the balance of Russian and European interests in Ukraine which is something the Russians have been asking for for a long time in this crisis and really has not been addressed. Well, let's talk about those sanctions. I mean, how hard are those sanctions going to hit Moscow? And there is a possibility that Moscow will retaliate as well. And I understand that there's already vast sums of money moving around international banks right now as those figures that are targeted begin to, begin to move uh, their assets uh, out of Western banks into other banks. Exactly right. And if we're talking about some uh, visa cancellations and some, uh, some uh, sanctions directed against specific individuals. I don't think that's going to hurt the Russians too badly and might still allow some serious negotiation on the bigger picture to proceed. However, if we're talking about real harsh economic sanctions to try to, for example, uh, sanction the entire Russian financial system, the Russians will retaliate, and that could cause a downward spiral that would prevent any serious attempt to uh, solve this problem. And is there a likelihood that if Russia is the victim of sanctions, that it could basically double down and move troops into other parts of eastern Ukraine as well? Exactly right. And uh, there, there have been concerns about that expressed by both sides. There have been disorders in places like Kharkov and uh, Donetsk, uh, Russian troops on the border with Ukraine. And that is a very real possibility and something that should be kept in mind as Western governments consider their next move. You know, Russia has been accused by the United States, by President Obama, by Secretary of State John Kerry of violating international law. How different is what is happening in Crimea from, say, what happened in Kosovo or Iraq or Syria or even Libya? Well, that's exactly the point. If you look at the statements from Western, especially American officials, they cite territorial integrity, uh, the rule of law, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that coin has been debased long since by the uh, behavior of Western governments, particularly, unfortunately, the American government. And if you look at all the standards they point to, this violates the uh, Ukrainian constitution. Well, uh, Kosovo violated the Serbian constitution, and Washington just ignored that argument. I think the chickens are coming home to roost. Okay, so we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.